Thank you for watching this video. My name is Vic Veer. I am an ENT consultant at the Royal National Throat, Nose and Ear Hospital in London. My job is the head of the sleep surgery department, which means I look after people with snoring and sleep apnea who are unable to tolerate CPAP and I give them a solution around that. Now, uh, the reason why I made this video is to talk about this new product called Snoozeal. Now, first off, I want to say that uh, this product, which helps people with snoring and sleep apnea, they have not paid me for this review. Uh, these are just my own personal opinions. Uh, they did, however, give me uh, this as a free sample so I could have a look at it. So the way this device works is by using this bit here. And you can see this is quite soft sort of plastic. And this bit here goes into your mouth. And these grey bits here, which are electrodes, sit around your tongue. The idea behind that is that you're exercising your tongue, you're toning it up. So when you're lying in bed and you're sleeping and your tongue falls back and stops you from breathing, well, the idea that this tones up your tongue, brings it forward and opens up your airway so you don't snore or have sleep apnea. So inside the box you get um, basically three things. You get a charging device, which is USB and USB-C, Type-C at the end. And then you have uh, the, uh, the battery, basically. And then you have the thing that goes into your mouth. So the first thing is that you get the battery pack. Get the charger with the Type-C end. So I guess any Type-C uh, charger lead will help. Plug this into the wall. Charge this for about two hours or so. This becomes a little blue light. And when you've got that charged up, you get the, the mouthpiece and the charger and you put them together. It's gone, you see it flashing there. And then what you do is you put this device in your mouth and one, apparently one size fits all. So everyone's got the same size tongue according to them. You put this in your mouth. I've just realized you can't talk at the same time. So rather than attempting to do that, I'll talk a little about how you control the Snoozeal device. Some devices appear to have a remote control, but the device I got in the post only had the option of pairing it with my mobile phone via this app. This seems a far better solution to me, so I suspect that you only get the remote control if you happen not to have a smartphone. The opening screen looks rather smart, and there are three main areas. There's the snore tracker, a section on the Snoozeal device itself, and rather oddly there's a bit at the bottom showing you the news. This seems completely unrelated to Snoozeal, it just seems to be a bit of space that they wanted to use up. I'll start by showing you what happens when I click on My Snoozeal. You firstly get to a screen which tells you that you ought to check that there are no cracks or breaks in the plastic, and then it tells you to connect the battery to the mouthpiece, and then put it into your mouth. The app asks you if it can turn on Bluetooth and at that point the app looks for the Snoozeal device. Mine happens to be called C3D741B which is rather catchy and then you pair the two devices and then at that point it straight away takes you into the stimulation of your tongue. Each exercise is about 20 minutes long and there is a countdown at the top. Under that there is a power gauge which allows you to alter how much current you want the device to deliver to your tongue. It starts at light and goes all the way up to intense. The current comes through as a pulse wave through your tongue and over the course of about 20 minutes the time between each pulse shortens so at some points the current seems to be almost constant. When you get to these levels, you really feel the whole tongue contracting in your mouth and you can tell that it has been worked hard. There doesn't seem to be much contraction of the muscle at the start and the end of the exercises. At the lightest level, I wouldn't say it caused any discomfort at all. It was very tolerable and not at all painful. As you head up to moderate, it can sting a little. And it sort of reminded me of being a kid again and sticking your tongue into the active ports of a battery. Again, there is a new section at the bottom. And as you can see, the only thing anyone's talking about right now is COVID-19. But this makes a bit more sense to me now. 
It allows you to distract yourself whilst the exercise carries on. Personally, I found doing something else made it much easier to tolerate. I cleaned the kitchen when I first tried this for the first time. It seemed not to hamper me too much, and I think it would be a little distracting if I decided to read a book or something. But I guess everyone is different, and that just might work for you. Trying to rack up the power up to intense makes the app display a warning sign. And personally, I found this level far too painful. Mild to moderate was perfectly fine for me. You can also pause the therapy if you want, and it gives you a three minute break with another countdown. So going back to the main screen, this time I'm going to select the sleep tracker. On the first page, there are these six options to describe different things that might affect or alter your sleep. Most of these don't really make any sense to me, as this is a device which is meant to be recording your snoring. Although I do appreciate that a stressful day can disturb your sleep, I am not aware of any evidence that suggests that it makes your tongue fall back at night and makes you snore more. Personally, I would have added things like being unwell or having a blocked nose or being very tired, as these would make sense as they all affect your snoring. On the next screen, the app says that you should put your phone on your bedside cabinet and keep it charged. I guess this is to avoid the app draining your battery overnight. I think I would have mentioned myself that the phone should be positioned in the same way each night so that the microphone is pointing the same way to avoid errors in data collection. So on the next screen, you can see what time it is for me. It's 7.32 in the morning, but it gives you when you turn on the device, about 10 minutes to fall asleep. I guess this is to avoid you recording you shuffling around as you settle for sleep. In the morning, you turn off the recording and see how loud you were overnight. The app doesn't just record the snoring. It will also record all the other coughs, snorts, grunts, groans, and all the other noises we humans like to make in bed. So it is in fact a noise recorder rather than just picking up snoring. But then again, there isn't a device in the world that is accurately able to pick up snoring from all the other noises. So this, to me, is reasonable. So long as you understand it and appreciate it, you can interpret the results accordingly. So now that I have shown you the device and the application that goes with it, I want to now look at the scientific evidence behind this device. Currently, there is only one article published in a peer-reviewed medical journal back in 2018. It was actually done by an eminent sleep surgeon called Professor Stuck from Germany, and he's very well known. I've read some of his papers in the past, and they're all very good quality. Anyway, this is actually quite a small trial of 13 patients with mild obstructive sleep apnea and a body mass index of less than 32. So these people are not hugely overweight and they don't have severe sleep apnea needing to use a CPAP machine or something like that. Now, in this trial, the Snoozeal device was used twice a day, 20 minutes each time, for about six weeks. And the bed partner recorded the level of snoring on a 0 to 10 scale, with 10 being really loud and 0 being silent. So they just wrote it down on a piece of paper or something the next day. Each of these graphs explain the results best, I think. Without going into too much detail, the Snoozeal device seems to reduce snoring in about four to four weeks' time. In these 13 patients, the average snoring level before it all started was about 5 out of 10. Then after four weeks of treatment, it dropped to about 1.5 out of 10. They also found that patients who had very mild sleep apnea did better than those who were breathing worse at night so at the upper end of the mild scale. If you don't know what sleep apnea is, just have a look at my YouTube channel or my website for more information. But basically, it's when people stop breathing at night because of an obstruction in their throat. And it's a very common cause of loud snoring. Now, in this trial, it seems to work best on snorers who weren't really affected by sleep apnea. The major limitation in this paper was the fact that it was only tested on 13 patients, which makes it hard to be sure about the results. And it was only tested on people who have a body mass index of less than 32. So we're not really sure if this works better on people or worse on people who are more overweight than this. 
Lastly, the results are based on a subjective report from the bed partner. So we're relying on the bed partner to assess how loud or how quiet they were each night. And it's not really the most accurate way of measuring snoring. Apart from this, there are no other published articles on this device at all. However, looking at this New Zealand website and the fact that a trial was done in my hospital, uh, the Royal National Ear, Nose and Throat Hospital in London, uh, I can only assume that this data is going to be published soon. Again, um, let me assure you that wasn't a part of this trial at all. That's why I don't know the data. And all the data I'm getting is from the Snoozil website itself. So you can have a look at this yourself. So this second trial, which is a lot bigger, was uh, this time 54 patients. And the sleep study was done before and after treatment. So a sleep study machine is a machine that diagnoses sleep apnea and works out basically how severe your sleep apnea is. It also crucially has a monitor on it to record the level of sound the snorer makes each night. So this is a far more objective way of measuring snoring rather than um, asking the bed partner how loud they were that night. So the data here shows that on average there was a 54% reduction in snoring throughout the group. And so about 91% of people were measured to have a reduction in their snoring overall. But I guess that also means that 1 out of 10 people had no benefit whatsoever in terms of their snoring. But that's still rather good odds. Uh, unusually, I'm, I'm, not, I'm no maths genius, but looking at this chart, it looks like the numbers add up to 95 rather than 102. And on this slide, it says that there are 54 patients, but also that there are 102 patients. I think it's a little unfair for me to start quibbling about the numbers because the actual paper isn't out yet. But once the actual published paper comes out, I'm sure these numbers will make more sense. But even so, it's clear that there is a significant effect on snoring and other factors, which I'll talk about now. So looking again at this slide, this slide looks at the severity of sleep apnea and how snoozil affects it. It seems that Snoozil improves the sleep apnea scores by 50% and also reduces the Epworth score by 50%. Epworth score, if you don't know it, is a score of daytime tiredness. So the higher the Epworth score, the more tired you are during the day. And we measure this because a lot of people with sleep apnea don't get enough restful sleep at night and therefore tired during the day. So a 50% reduction in the score is significant. It's important to realise that a 50% reduction in your score doesn't mean that you're 50% less tired, but it's still important. And a 50% reduction in sleep apnea, even if it's only mild to begin with and brings it down to less mild, it's still important and still useful for us to know. The data on the Snoozil website also describes some of the side effects that can happen if you use the Snoozil device. Now, these are all rather mild, as you expect, but it seems, looking at these uh, patients, about 10% of people seem to produce more saliva than before. And I don't understand why they produce more saliva, but it's quite common in oral devices such as a bite-relaxing splint or a um, mandibular advancement device. They all seem to cause a little bit more saliva production. Um, so this is to be expected. Just under 7% have a tingling sensation in their tongues, which I assume means whilst they're not wearing the device, although I'm not entirely sure. Again, we'll have to wait for the published article to come out. Under 3% reported a sensitivity in their tooth fillings, and a similar number of people, under 3%, described a metallic taste in their mouth. Now, a metallic taste in the mouth is associated with damage to the corda tympani nerve, this nerve is a, is a pair of nerves that provide taste sensation to the tongue. And if a surgeon were to cut this nerve, the patient may describe a metallic taste in the mouth. Now, this nerve is often cut in ear surgery because this nerve goes across your eardrum. So it is quite common, but it's obviously something that we're not keen on seeing in uh, any of our patients. About uh, less than 2% of people report a gagging sensation, I guess with having something in the mouth that you can get that feeling. 
and less than 1% of people describe having a tight jaw. This is probably from over-exercising the jaw muscles. Reassuringly, many of these symptoms seem to settle down after a few weeks, and at the end, only 10% of people in total are still reporting these minor problems. Now, although this may sound quite a lot, actually, this is very small, and it shows that this device is well tolerated overall. Lastly, there seems to be some evidence here that suggests that the effect of Snoozil works for about three months even after treatment, even after you've stopped using it, before the problems seem to recur again. And therefore, they advise to use the Snoozil device for six weeks every day, once a day, and then move on to maintaining the effect and only using the Snoozil device once or twice a week. Now, this advice probably comes from the bodybuilding paper's which show that on average you need to exercise once or twice a week to maintain your muscle mass. Although I guess that depends how old you are, because the older you get, the more exercise you need to do to maintain your muscle mass. So briefly, I want to go over how I think this device helps people with snoring and sleep apnea. As you may have seen from my other um, YouTube videos and website, there are a huge variety of reasons why some people may snore. Most people snore from the palate area, which is around that dangly thing at the back of your throat, otherwise known as the uvula. And I've marked this with this red star on the diagram. Another common area that leads to obstruction and snoring is the tonsil area, which is especially common in children or adults with visible tonsils. Particularly in people with very loud snoring, the back of the throat can close in and cause an earth-shattering snoring, which means that many of these people have to sleep in a separate bedroom from their partners. The tongue is often involved in snoring, but in my experience, it's more important in blocking your throat, particularly when you're lying on your back. Here, gravity drops the jaw back and the tongue slides over the airway, causing sleep apnea. Very rarely, the voice box itself can fold in on itself, causing snoring obstruction. But these aren't even considering the problems with the nose and adenoids, again, which I've marked on the diagram. What makes this more complicated is that most people have a combination of all of these factors and it is very hard to work out what your individual problem is until you've had a complete assessment. Until then, you're just using trial and error on various devices until you find out the one that works for you. Now, Snoozil works mainly on the tongue muscle and therefore also on the muscles attached to the tongue. So it probably has a minor effect on the palate as well as the back wall of the throat. However, I can't really see how it would have any effect on the size of your tonsils, for example. So this is the reason why there isn't one device or surgery that works for everyone. To deal with snoring and sleep apnea properly, you need to find out exactly what the problem is and therefore choose a treatment that would best deal with your individual problem. Uh, In conclusion, I think this is a really nice idea. It's a well-designed product. And I think for people with a predominantly tongue-based obstruction and snoring, this should help. Um, As I said, we haven't got the data yet, we haven't got the evidence yet to work out exactly which populations it will work on. But the evidence is coming through, and um, I'll try and put this on my website or on YouTube when I have that information. So thank you for watching this video, and I hope you found it informative. If you'd like a snoozle device, do let me know, and I'll be happy to send one out to you or I could assess whether or not this is a good idea in your situation.